If it's not bad enough that these creatures are absolutely terrifying, here's the cherry on top. Centipedes are venomous, and some of them can give you a heck of a bite. Oh, 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 did it get you? But what if I told you that one centipede actually had a venom unlike any other creature on the planet, and it's almost certainly living under your feet right now. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm searching for one of the weirdest arthropods in the world. Under one of these logs, boards, or bricks, I'm hoping to find a well-kept secret of the natural world and a centipede that might just break what we know about biology. You've probably seen bark centipedes before in your yard or garden. These lightning-fast red creatures are the absolute scourge of the subterranean world, making short work of any small invertebrates that cross their path. But that's not what I'm after today. In my mission to uncover the secret world that surrounds us every day, I'm looking for some of the strangest creatures you've probably never heard of, and I wonder if you knew there was more than one type of centipede. The centipedes make up the class Chylopoda and are incredibly fierce predators. Most famous are the Scolopendromorphs, like the little red bark centipedes in your garden. These guys get huge and have some of the most painful bites in the world, but there is more to the world of centipedes than just pain. Some of the strangest secrets of our world take just a little bit of a closer look, and the more overlooked centipede groups are chock full of them. What I'm after today is the soil centipede. To find one, I'm flipping cover, because their delicate bodies can't survive the open air for long. They need moist, damp soil to thrive, and the day after a rain, checking boards and bricks is a perfect way to find them. There we go. Look at that. He's really small, but that's actually exactly what we're looking for. That is a soil centipede. These are probably like Spencer. That thing's tiny. You can't tell me that thing's venomous. Believe it or not, it actually is. Look how it moves. Soil centipedes look unlike anything else on the planet. You can tell that they're centipedes. They're bright red and orange, and they have one pair of legs per body segment, but they're so long and worm-like. And the way they kind of probe around with not just their antennae, but their whole front half of their body almost reminds me of how like the velvet worms of the tropics move. Really, really alien looking creatures. These, as weird as they look, are actually tiny little predators hunting for springtails and small worms in the subterranean environment. They get their name soil centipede because of their affinity for the earth. The centipedes in general are very subterranean creatures, but these guys you almost never see above the surface. In fact, soil centipedes are so subterranean, they don't even have eyes. The way these creatures experience their world is entirely through touch, vibration, and smell. You can see, we got him on these pine needles here, he's just smelling all over, using those tiny little antennae right in front of his face to pick up chemical trails, air currents, and things, putting together a picture of his environment in that tiny little brain. And honestly, with how small these creatures are, I really don't know what their experience really would be like. But I have to imagine it's quite strange by our standards, but we're only scratching the surface on how weird these creatures are. They're venomous, right? And if you look really, really closely on that tiny little head, they actually have these modified legs that have become fangs or venom claws. They're actually used as hypodermic needles to inject their subterranean prey with that incredible, unusual venom. But to understand what makes the venom of this centipede so unusual, we have to understand how venom evolves in the first place. With snakes and spiders, there's actually a lot of evidence that suggests their venoms are actually modified saliva. And while some of the toxins they have may just be proteins that these animals have modified over millions of years of evolution, there's actually evidence to support that in a lot of these saliva-based venoms, the toxins were stolen. Most infamously, everyone talks about the brown recluse and how their bites rot away at your skin and melt your arm off and can even kill you, right? It turns out there's a very convincing hypothesis that the brown recluse may have stolen its necrotic compounds from necrotizing bacteria. But across the animal kingdom, there's mounting evidence that other animals have stolen venoms from bacteria as well. But how does this work? Well, it turns out that bacteria actually kind of have a way to sort of 
cheat evolution. Just like students cheating on a test, it turns out bacteria can actually sort of share their notes with other individual bacteria around them. And they do this through a process called horizontal gene transfer. They can basically make copies of sections of their genome and they put it in this little package that they essentially spit out into the world. And other bacteria can absorb that packet and incorporate it into their genomes. But while bacteria seem to be the experts at cheating evolution through this really cunning method, it turns out that these bacterial gene packets aren't restricted to just the same species of bacteria or bacteria in general. Other organisms can swoop in and steal this information and use it for their own benefit too. Where this guy's venom gets really, really weird is unlike a lot of other centipedes and spiders and snakes, where venom toxins have been stolen from bacteria, these guys have actually gotten theirs from fungus. You're probably like, Spencer, what? Fungus? What? Well, you think about it, right? We know that some mushrooms can be poisonous. Well, lots of fungi actually use different toxins and enzymes to break down their food. Fungus aren't plants. They're not synthesizing their food from the sun. They have to digest it but they have to digest it in ways that are way weirder than we're used to digesting food. And so, while we actually know very little about the venom of the soil centipede, we assume that it probably stole some toxins that the uh, fungi, the mycelium, living in the soil where this guy inhabits, probably stole some of those toxins and made use of it for its own purposes. And most people wouldn't even realize they're living right under your feet. If there is damp soil, there are probably soil centipedes living near you. These guys have even broader range than a lot of the bark centipedes do. These bizarre creatures are definitely just, just feet from you right now while you're watching this video, which is just wild to me. It's one of the reasons I love a lot of these subterranean creatures so much is they are a perfect example of a secret of the natural world because they're living right alongside us. And most of the time, we have no freaking clue they're even there. And the fact that these little myriapods are so successful means that these weird venom adaptations they have are actually serving them quite well in their environment. There is nothing else quite like these bizarre creatures right here. And what they're doing is they're keeping the populations of all those springtails and tiny little soil dwelling worms in check so that everything is balanced in the secret world can carry on, absolutely incredible. Definitely a creature that most people would probably see and not think twice about. They're small, they're unassuming, they don't move very fast, so they're not all that scary or startling, but at the end of the day, they're one of the most unique life forms in the entire world. How about that? Soil centipedes, and they're everywhere. But it turns out that soil centipedes aren't the only garden variety creatures that are actually holding a wealth of unusual secrets. I bet there's probably a thing or two you didn't know about the wolf spider. And this video right here dives into the incredible secrets of these unusual arachnids biology. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.